So we've had a really great discussion. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of the panelists. It's been extremely informative. Uh, and before we, we complete uh, our, our time today, I'd really like to get some just final thoughts from each of our panelists. Uh, and we'll go down the road. Uh, John? Yeah, no, we're clearly at ASH this year seeing the fruits of a lot of hard work on the part of, you know, say, investigators who wrote trials and most importantly, the patients that contributed to them and seeing long-term follow-up now with these new targeted agents that really give us a lot of promise in the future for CLL, except in the patients where we're potentially doing curative therapy with FCR-based regimens, where we might be able to move away from chemotherapy for the majority of our patients. And to me, that's the most exciting thing. Yeah, and I would say as we begin to, begin to learn about the molecular biology of these diseases, all the research that's gone on has really translated into major advances in, in lymphomas, in both diffuse large B cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma. And our better understanding of the, of the molecular biology will really lead to major shifts in the way we approach these. And uh, I think it's a great era. Um, I wish I were starting over. I would add before, uh, Again, going to John, is that one of the things that is really a topic of conversation is that we're seeing convergence across mm -hmm. diseases, right? right. And, and I think that that states there are a lot of similar concepts of combining novel agents uh, with historical agents like antibodies and, uh, again, chemoimmunotherapy with uh, CAR T cells. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we're thinking, rather than thinking about individual diseases, we're thinking about modalities of therapy that, that can be used synergistically. Right. I think, uh, you know, I think uh, just a, a reminder that we need to continue to focus on our goals of therapy, and it's easy when we're extending survival. It's measurable if we're improving progression-free survival, but at the end of the day, or curing patients, obviously measurable very easily, um, but the quality of life of the patient is really key, and the progression-free survival without overall survival scenario, maintenance treatments that people are gonna be on for a long time that have side effects. That question, which I think you framed uh, earlier, you know, is it, it's harder in the six months you're getting FCR, it may catch up with you later, but you may do great for many, many years or decades. On the other hand, something like a brutinib, easier in the short term for most people, not bad in the long term for most people, annoying in the, in the long term for some people, how do you balance that out in a way that is not um, focused on our biases as a physician or what we think is best for a patient? How can we more objectively present that to a patient in a way that, that results in the right decision for them, I think is what uh, we're tasked with. Um, I, uh, a few of us just wrote a little editorial at uh, MD Anderson for distribution. And um, basically the message was, don't forget about chemotherapy. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's uh, very sexy to have the targeted therapies, but, you know, CHOP has been a uh, fundamental uh, chemotherapy drug uh, from the early 1970s. It's done a pretty good job. So um, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Great closing comment. Uh, thanks to all of you for your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be both useful and informative. Thank you.